Welcome to our podcast by Coelho Duas Mill, exploring four Daikin innovative climate control systems applied to a single family home in Grandula. We'll assess their energy efficiency, environmental impact, operational costs, and overall performance, providing insights for sustainable living. The water condensed geothermal system stands out for its exceptional seasonal efficiency and sustainability. It's ideal for long term projects focused on reducing ecological footprints offering a reliable solution for those committed to environmental responsibility and energy conservation. For medium-sized buildings, the VRV system with air condensation offers a balanced alternative. It combines efficiency, moderate costs, and versatility, making it suitable for various applications while maintaining a focus on energy performance and operational simplicity. In contrast, chiller and split systems exhibit lower efficiencies and higher environmental impacts. These systems are more suited for specific or smaller projects, where their limitations can be managed effectively without compromising the overall project goals. Choosing the right system involves considering the building's thermal loads and prioritizing solutions that balance efficiency, sustainability, and operational simplicity. This approach ensures that the chosen system aligns with the project's energy performance and sustainability objectives. The podcast emphasizes the importance of aligning the chosen climate control system with sustainability and energy performance goals. This alignment is crucial for achieving long-term benefits and ensuring that the system supports the project's overall environmental strategy. By focusing on systems that offer high efficiency and low environmental impact, homeowners can contribute to a more sustainable future. This approach not only benefits the environment, but also enhances the home's comfort and reduces operational costs over time. In conclusion, selecting the right climate control system is a critical decision for any building project. By considering efficiency, sustainability, and cost, homeowners can make informed choices that support both their immediate needs and long-term environmental goals. Please join us at the podcast innovative climate systems with our partner Dai Kin. All right, so let's uh let's dive into this. Okay. You're tr trying to figure out the best climate control system for like a a pretty impressive project. Right. A large single family home and and you're thinking long term. Absolutely. Right? Sustainability, cost effectiveness. Of course. And of course keeping comfortable year round yeah, in yeah. a place where the weather can be shall we say, lively. Exactly. And and you've been smart enough to gather some really in-depth research yeah. comparing four different Dakin systems. Yeah, Dakin's a leading brand. Yeah. So you're already off to a good start. Absolutely. Okay, so for everyone listening along, we, we're we talking about a home in Grandola, Portugal, right. coastal town, mm -hmm. hot summers, mild winters, Yeah. but we've got detailed simulation yes. based on actual weather data. Yeah. There's no guessing games here. Real deal. This is the real deal. Yeah. And the systems you're looking at, we've yeah. got the Dakin RXYQ18U. Okay. That's an air-cooled VRV system. Which stands for variable refrigerant volume, by the way. It's a system known for its flexibility, especially in larger homes. Okay. Think of it like this. You can have multiple indoor units, each with its own thermostat, all connected to one outdoor unit. Wow. So you can fine tune the temperature in different zones. Okay. Which is ideal for a multi-story house. Ah, uh, so no more thermostat battles. Exactly. That's a win right there. Right. But let's talk efficiency. How does this RXYQ18U stack up against the other options, especially when it comes to energy consumption? It actually does pretty well. Yeah. We're looking at an SCOP of 5.42 for heating and a SEER of 7.43 for cooling. Okay. Now those might sound like random numbers, right. but they're seasonal efficiency ratings, meaning they factor in how the system performs over an entire year in Grandola's specific climate. So those ratings take into account those real world temperature swings we were talking about. Exactly. That's helpful. Okay. Next up, we've got the Dakin RWIQ 10T9 plus RWIQ 8T9. Okay. It's another VRV system, but this one uses geothermal energy. Yes. Now that sounds pretty high tech. It, Can you break down how that works? Imagine this. You're tapping into the stable temperature of the earth itself to heat and cool your home. Wow. It's a renewable energy source that's always there, regardless of whether it's scorching hot or freezing outside. Okay. And in terms of efficiency, this particular system is the front runner with a SCOP of 6.87 and a SEER of 8.57. Those are some seriously impressive numbers. Yeah, they are. But I'm guessing all that tech doesn't come cheap. 
You are correct. What's the cost comparison between this geothermal system and the air-cooled VRV we talked about earlier? Yeah, so you're right. The upfront cost for geothermal is higher. We're talking about 76,000 euro for the RWEYQ 10T9 plus RWEYQ 8T9 compared to about 21,000 for the air-cooled RXYQ 18U. Okay. However, and this is a big however, those incredibly low operating costs with the geothermal system mean you could potentially recoup a significant portion of that initial investment through lower energy bills over time. So it's a trade-off, lower upfront costs versus potentially significant long-term savings. Right. We're talking real money here, yeah. which is important for any homeowner. Absolutely. Now you've also got data on two other Dakin systems, a chiller, right. specifically the EWYT 050 CZP A2 model, and a split system, the FBA 50A9 plus RZEG G 50B. Yep. How do those fit into the mix? The chiller is an interesting one because it uses water to distribute heating and cooling. Okay. Which could be advantageous if you're already thinking about radiant floor heating or something similar. But if I'm reading this right, the chiller's efficiency isn't quite on par with those VRV systems, is it? That's right. It has a ESCO P of 3.24 and a SEER of 6.01. Okay. Still decent, but not as impressive as the VRV options. Now, the mm -hmm. split system, the FBA 50A9 plus RZA AG 50B, that's your classic, more affordable solution. Think of your standard AC unit, but for a house this size, it might not be the most efficient or effective option. So it sounds like, at least from an efficiency standpoint, those VRV systems are the front runners. Yeah. But we need to see how they actually perform in Grandola's specific climate throughout the year. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. You've got all those fancy simulations based on actual weather data. And that's what we're going to dive into next. Okay. Those simulations are going to give us a much more granular understanding of how each system handles those real-world temperature swings in Grandola. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into these simulations. Okay. Remember, we're talking about Grandola, Portugal, right. hot, dry summers, mild but humid winters. Yeah. And we want to see how these Dakin systems actually perform under those specific conditions, not just in theory. Right. Because the system might have a great sear rating. Exactly. But if it struggles during those peak summer months when you really need it, that's a problem. Yeah, for sure. So let's start with those winters. Okay. Gordola doesn't get super cold, but those humid winters can be chilly. Right. Especially in a larger house. Yeah, especially in a larger house. How do they perform? Well, what's interesting here is that even though those winters are mild, Yeah. The simulations show that heating demands can still be significant. And when we look at the performance of these Dakin systems, both the air-cooled VRV, the RXYQ18U, and the geothermal VRV, the RWEYQ10T9 plus RWYQ18 handle those demands really well. So no cold toes in the winter. No cold toes. That's a plus. Yeah, that's important. But how do they compare in terms of actual energy consumption during those colder months? Right. Because that's what really impacts those monthly bills. Yeah. Well, as we might expect, the geothermal VRV really shines here. Okay. Remember, it's drawing heat from the earth, which is a much more efficient way to heat a home than using an air-cooled system, especially during those peak demand periods. Right. So even though it has a higher upfront cost, those energy savings during the winter could start making a difference pretty quickly. So geothermal is winning the winter battle so far. So far, so good. But what about those scorching summers? Yeah. Grindola gets pretty hot and dry. It does. And I imagine keeping a large home comfortable in that kind of heat requires some serious cooling power. Absolutely. And the simulations confirm that all four systems, the air-cooled VRV, the geothermal VRV, the chiller, and even the split system, can handle those peak summer temperatures. Okay. But as you might expect, there are some pretty significant differences in their efficiency and overall energy consumption. Okay, so lay it on me. Which system is going to keep things cool without sending those electricity bills through the roof? Well, once again, the geothermal VRV emerges as the most energy efficient option, even in those extreme summer conditions. The air-cooled VRV is a close second, demonstrating the inherent efficiency advantages of VRV technology compared to traditional systems. But both the chiller, the EWYT 050 CZPA2 and the split system, the FBA 50A9 plus RZA G50B, shifts higher energy consumption during those peak cooling periods. So it seems like, based on these simulations, those VRV systems are really pulling ahead. Yeah. Both in terms of heating and cooling efficiency. It seems that way. But we also need to consider the bigger picture. Yeah. Right? We can't just look at performance. Yeah. We have to factor in the environmental impact of these systems as well. 
You're absolutely right. Sustainability is a crucial consideration for any homeowner these days, and that's what we'll be diving into next. Okay, so we've talked performance. We've looked at simulations based on real-world weather data, and we've even crunched some numbers on potential cost savings. We have. But now it's time to talk about something that's increasingly important to homeowners. Yes. The environmental impact of these climate control systems. Absolutely. After all, staying comfortable shouldn't come at the expense of the planet, right? No, it shouldn't. Yeah. Well, and when we look at these four Dakin systems through that lens, yeah. there's a clear front runner in terms of sustainability. The geothermal VRV, the RWYQ10T9 plus RWYQ8T9. Okay, so why is that? What no. makes geothermal so much more environmentally friendly than the other options? Well, it all comes down to the source of energy with geothermal. You're tapping into the Earth's natural heat. Right. A renewable energy source that's constantly replenished. You're not burning fossil fuels. You're not releasing harmful emissions into the atmosphere. Right. It's about as clean as it gets. So for homeowners who are really serious about reducing their carbon footprint, geothermal seems like the obvious choice. It does. But what about those who might not have the budget for such a system? Right. Are there other options that are still relatively eco-friendly? Definitely the air-cooled VRV, the RXYQ18U, while not as inherently sustainable as geothermal, still performs well from an environmental standpoint. Okay. And that's mainly due to its high energy efficiency by using less electricity overall. Yeah. It indirectly contributes to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So even though it's powered by electricity, which might come from sources that aren't entirely renewable, yeah. the fact that it's so efficient makes it a more environmentally friendly choice than a less efficient system. Exactly. And it's worth noting that the electricity grid in Portugal is becoming increasingly reliant on renewable sources like solar and wind power. Yeah, that's a good fit. So as the grid gets cleaner, the environmental impact of systems like the air-cooled VRV becomes even smaller. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what about the other two systems, the chiller, the EWYT050 CZPA2, and the split system, the FBA589 plus RZAG50B? Right. How do they stack up in terms of sustainability? Well, to be honest, they do have a larger environmental footprint compared to the VRV systems, and that's primarily due to their lower efficiency ratings. They simply consume more energy to achieve the same level of heating or cooling, which translates to a greater reliance on electricity generation regardless of the source. So for homeowners who are really committed to eco-friendly living, those systems might not be the ideal choices. That's a fair assessment, but it's also important to remember that even within those categories, there are variations in efficiency levels. Newer models are constantly being developed with improved energy saving features. So if someone is set on a chiller or a split system, it's crucial to choose the most efficient model available to minimize that environmental impact. So it seems like when it comes to choosing a climate control system, there's a lot to consider. There is. We've got performance, efficiency, cost, and now sustainability. A lot of factors. It's a complex decision. It is, and there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Right. The best choice for one homeowner might not be the best choice for another. It all depends on individual needs, priorities, and, of course, budget. That's true. So what's the takeaway here for our listener who's trying to make this decision? I'd say the key is to really think about what matters most. Yeah. Is it upfront cost, mm -hmm. long-term savings, environmental impact, once you've got a clear understanding of your priorities, right. you can start narrowing down the options and choosing the system that best aligns with your goals. That's a great point. It's all about finding the right balance. And hopefully this deep dive has given our listener the information they need to make an informed decision. I hope so, too. Choosing a climate control system is a big investment, both financially and in terms of your environmental impact. Yeah. But with a little knowledge and careful consideration, right. it's possible to find a solution that meets your needs and helps you create a comfortable and sustainable home. Well said. And remember, listeners, if you've got any further questions or need more personalized advice, there are plenty of resources available. You can consult with HVAC experts in your area, do some more research online, or even reach out to manufacturers like Dakin for detailed information on their products. The important thing is to do your homework and make a choice that you feel confident about. Absolutely, knowledge is power. And when it comes to creating a home that's both comfortable and sustainable, the more you know, the better equipped you'll be to make the right decisions. Couldn't agree more. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into climate control systems for a large single family home in Grindola, Portugal.
We've covered a lot of ground, but hopefully you, our listener, have come away with a better understanding of the options available, the factors to consider, and ultimately how to choose the system that's right for you. Until next time, happy deep diving.